kia ora. Helen Brams here coming to you live from Colorado Springs in Colorado. Hope you've all had a super fantastic sparkling day. It's been an awesome, awesome day today. It's been unbelievable. Um, today was Tune Up Tuesday and for your mindset, it was all about tuning up your tongue. In other words, watching what you say, remembering that words are seeds and when we plant those seeds, they tend to be fertilized and grow and sprout. So the more positive words you um, use, the more positive stuff is going to come out and the more positive stuff is going to come back to you. So how was you? How did you do today with tuning up your tongue and using words like how can I um, and what is the next step for whatever it is you're working on instead of saying I can't or I don't know how or um, how can I find out more information about something rather than saying, well, I have no clue. So remembering to switch your words around and putting them into a positive aspect of how you can take your ne next step forward and also planting positive seeds into other people's lives using positive words. Um, and then on your business, it was about find it was about tuning up your follow-up sequence. So what did you come up with? If you're still stuck on your on your follow-up sequence, then join us at Networking Riches on August the 8th. Um, the link is in the description at havetonetwork.com um, and there is actually a section there on follow-up and the different steps that you can take to help you follow up with your clients and, to, and help turn them into raving fans and it's, it's going to be awesome. Um, every time I watch Networking Riches or participate, I always end up changing my follow-up sequence because I, you know, you got to change it up every now and again because people will sort of get into the thing, oh yeah, well, six months ago they sent me this, now they're sending it to me again and yes, yeah, so you got to change it up every now and again. So it's a great way, it's a great way to remind me of the different ways I can follow up with people and, um, and it's, and it, and the cool part about follow-up is it, has to be, it doesn't even have to be business related. It could even be giving them, them a referral. It is nothing about you selling to them. It is about how the follow-up sequence is about how you provide value to them, not how, um, what you can sell them. Um, so there's that. And then did you have fun listening to Broadway tunes today? Um, we didn't quite get that far today because I have been busy. <laughs> Um, I have been creating a lot of contacts, um, contacting a lot of people on LinkedIn, replying to a lot of messages, answering a lot of phone calls from people calling me from the messages they received from me. Um, in fact, as soon as I get off this, um, this live, I've got another call to return. Um, it has been a very busy day of connecting and I have loved every single minute of it. It's been awesome um, helping people to um, find ways that they can... Um, that they can um, connect with their clients and turn them into raving fans. So it's been an awesome day of doing that. And what else have I been doing? Oh, that's basically it. <laughs> that's what I've been doing today. Um, and I'm still going. I'm still going. Um, I have homework that I've got to do for my media mastery tomorrow. So that will be tonight's task to get that out of the way in time for tomorrow. Um, because I think we've got some questions we have to go over. I know I saw a message there, but I haven't had a chance to read it yet. It's been busy. Um, but, um, you know, it's been a really, really productive day as far as reaching out to people and connecting with people. Um, I still have a lot of stuff to do today. But, you know, I haven't been rushing it. I've been taking my time. I've been making sure I take lots of breaks. Oh, and then this morning we had... Um, oh, this morning. That's right, this morning. After I did the Facebook Live this morning, I'm sitting here working. And the, next, and the next thing we hear are these dogs go, and we had the windows open, the next thing we hear are these dogs going berserk. And there was a guy out walking his dog, which was not much bigger than Zephy. Actually, no, a bit, big, a bit bigger, more, more of a medium-sized dog rather than a small slash medium. Because Zephy's right on the cusp between being a large, on the large side of small and the small side of medium. So this was a medium, medium dog. Um, and there was a Doberman that was on the loose and kept running up and this guy kept yelling, no, no, no. So by the time I got my shoes on to go out there and help him, cause I was walking around in bare feet, um, and got out and went to go out there, the Doberman had taken off, but, um, didn't realize what was going on. And then he's calling help, help. And so I grabbed my shoes, threw them on. By the time I went to go out there, he's walking off down the street and the Doberman was nowhere to be seen. So, um, not sure what was going on, but I said, like, oh, another dog, another dog attack. I really don't want to get in the middle of that. Um, but you know, you can't let a dog owner suffer by themselves. And this guy was out trying to walk his dog and he's trying to protect his dog. And this other dog kept coming up to it. I don't know if the dog was being aggressive or just wanting to play. And his dog was going after this dog. I don't know. Um, 
but um, yeah, we heard that, and um, so um, didn't quite see what was going on except this Doberman. All I could see was this Doberman running around out in the street. But by the time I got my shoes on, it was it was all over. He's walking off, and the but he kept looking back for this Doberman to come up again. Um, so not sure. And meanwhile, Zephy's just up on the window, so going, "What's going on? What's going on?" And she's like looking and watching, and you could see her heckles all right. The hair along her whole back was all raised. And I'm like, ooh, this doesn't look like a good situation. Or maybe she's remembering what she was in last week um, when she got attacked. So, um, yeah, kind of brought back a lot of those sort of feelings. It's like, eek. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, it's been, it's been a really good productive day. I got to talk to somebody I used to work with in Marriott. He was my very first general manager that I worked with. So I got to catch up with him um, and hear about the latest of what's happening with him and his hotel, which was sort of like, they're doing what? <laughs> so... Yeah, um, I was yeah catching up on some Marriott news. Um, it's amazing what companies are doing right now and um, how some companies are expanding while some are shrinking, um, and some are expanding in other in some areas and shrinking in other areas of their business. So it was kind of interesting to um, catch up with him and see what was happening in his world as a general manager for a Marriott property. Um, and I worked, he was my very first general manager back in 2000. Um, so that's how long we've known, God, my God, he was 2000, that means we've known each other 20 years? Jeepers! Wow! Um, <laughs> that just, that just hit me, <laughs> that I've known Arne for 20 years, oh my God. Yeah, in fact, when we were living in Virginia, when he was my general manager and he found out where I lived, we literally lived like about six to seven houses apart. Um, he was on, he was, I would drive past his house to and from work every single day. Um, he, he always said that I lived in the rich part of the neighborhood, yet I said to him, I said, yeah, but whose base price was higher? Um, <laughs> but it was, it was like about six to eight houses between us, between me and him. Um, his, his street T-boned into my street. Um, and so, you know, we were basically neighbors um, for the time that I was living in Centerville and when I started working with Marriott. Um, so yeah, it was, man, that was 20 years ago. Wow. Wow. Oh, sorry, that, that just hit me that it was 20 years ago that I first met him. And, you know, because I started working for Marriott the day after Memorial Day in 2000. Wow. And my last day with Marriott was July 30th of 2010. So I just did over 10 years with them. So I'm actually coming up on the 10 year anniversary of when I finished working with Marriott. Wow. Jeepers. I'm going to have to go think about that one. <laughs> I, I, I just hit, it just hit me. Oh my God. So yeah, so we kind of caught up on some Marriott news. <laughs> I didn't realize I'd known him for 10 years. Wow. 20 years. Wow. Jeepers. That was a long time ago. <laughs> that was a lifetime ago. That was almost a generation ago. Did you know generations are average between 20 to 30 years? Yeah. Um, so if somebody turns around and says, you know, they're, um, they've been living on a land, like I've got a friend in upstate New York, and um, her son is the eighth generation to be living on the land. That family, that land has been in their family for eight generations. So if you think a generation is 20 to 30 years, take that 25 and times that by eight, that's 200 years that that, you know, um, taking that middle number there, that's 200 years that that land has been in that family. I mean, that's kind of cool when you think about it like that. Now, it may not be 200 years, but it's been around 200 years. But if you're thinking 20 to 30 years and take that middle number of 25. Um, so, yeah. Wow. That's kind of cool. Anyway, I'm out of here. i got more follow-up to go do. i got more connections to make. My messages are going berserk right now. They're all popping up all over the place on my screen. And oh, I'm going to be here a while. <laughs> But I'm determined, but I've been finding that since I've been here, and I don't know if it's because the altitude that I'm at, but I am drinking a lot more water, and I'm actually getting really good night's sleep, and I'm going to bed earlier, but I'm also waking up earlier, because I normally sleep anywhere from five to six hours a night, and when I go to bed at 10 o'clock, I'm waking up at like four o'clock in the morning, three, four o'clock in the morning, and it's like, oh, I really don't want to get up now, so I may read for a little bit, and I may snooze for a little bit, um, but basically I'm awake around three, four o'clock in the morning, so... And then I'm going back to bed around 10 o'clock at night. So long days, but um, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Um, but anyway, 
have a super fantastic sparkling evening. We will catch you guys tomorrow morning with, um, what's tomorrow? Tomorrow's Wednesday. Winning Wednesdays tomorrow. Yes. I love winning Wednesdays. Um, so we will catch you guys tomorrow. I'm on a 90 day challenge, which means winning Wednesday means I have to report my numbers in for the week. So I'm working on getting my numbers done and getting them increased over last week. Um, so that's what I'm, that's what I've been working on today. But anyway, have a super fantastic sparkling evening and we'll catch you guys tomorrow morning. Heck on era.